Hey, let me ask you guys something. Can Christians... <laughs> can Christians watch movies that have magic in it and also do other things that are magic involved? Well, I believe me and woo 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 Keeg's Ice has an answer for you. We are going to talk about it. What's up? That Supernatural Talk family. We are on episode 13 and we have something to talk about. And I have none other than Glory Boy number two, the ex-Harry Potter fanatic himself, Keegs Ice. Amen. Thank you so much for having me on, man of God. We always have you on. You're like a you're like a staple of this. You know what I mean? Now here's the sad news of this one. Now you guys will be able to hear Isaiah, but you will not be able to see Isaiah. So wah, wah, yeah, wah. we're having a little bit of a camera issue over here, but but we're gonna make sure we ask him questions and let him talk. We, we may even move him over here to the seat. I don't know. We'll see, let's see. You guys that are listening to the podcast. It doesn't really matter because you guys aren't actually watching on video, but you guys that are watching on YouTube, you're not going to see him. And I know you're a little upset about that, but he's still here, especially in the spirit. He's definitely here. So I want to introduce you guys to the voice uh, that you can only hear. His name is Glory Boy Number One, Isaiah Poche Cortoreal. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glad to be here. Yep. Glad to be here. Oh, my goodness. Good to, good to have you, man. So anyway, this podcast is already starting off well. Uh, make sure if you guys are just tuning in for the first time, hit the like button uh, so we can push this out into that algorithm. Let's go ahead and also hit subscribe if it's your first time watching and hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time we put a new podcast out. We do these things weekly, I so I don't want you to miss any episode. This is episode 13. 13. Episode 13. We are going hard. We're going strong. Mm. We are making we're making waves for the kingdom through this podcast. Amen. And also we do have Glory Boy number three with us. He's sitting over there. I might put him in the chair over here. Uh, but we got Glory Boy number three, Mark Jean. In How the are house. you, my friends? It's good to see you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. These guys are interesting today. It's because I'm talking about some magic or something. I don't know. But did you like the beginning where I was like, woo 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 Yeah, it was, it, was, it was very, uh, very magical. Yeah. Well, yeah. we, we got to be careful because you don't know what type of Christians we have on here. Some oh. we, we could have very liberal ones. We could have very conservative ones. We could have middle ground ones. Yeah. You know, kind of like politics. Um, but we could have all kinds of different Christians on here. But oh. just a disclaimer, guys. We are not for magic. No, we are not. We are about the power of the Holy Ghost, the dunamis. Yeah. Amen. We're about the poder de Espíritu Santo. Amen. That's what we are all about. Okay, Amen. so don't get it mixed up. All right. So, I, I, before I give my answer, these guys, I haven't really got their full opinion on it. I got an idea of how they think, but I haven't, I haven't like said, "Hey guys, what do you think?" Before this podcast, so we're gonna be super raw. And we may have differing views on this, so I'm I'm interested. So before I give my view, I want to ask Glory Boy, number two, Keeg's Ice, can Christians watch a movie or even go to an amusement park or even entertain a book that has magical things in it? The word magic, mm -hmm. magical, you know, anything magic involved. Yeah. I would say for me personally, I've been on both spectrums of this. I was a Christian, um, but I was fully into the supernatural, magical stuff. I mean, it was it was Harry Potter, as he said. I was into Harry Potter. And then when I started going through deliverance and all that stuff, I was like, no, anything that has magic in it, it's demonic. I was like, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Like, I don't want anything to do with it or touch it. Um, I think that there's a thing here where there needs to be balance because there's, and just hear me, hear me with this. <laughs> We're called to be the light in the darkness, right? So 
if every single Christian says, no, I'm not going into Harry Potter world, right? Or, oh, no, I'm not going to this music park. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go into this movie theater and watch this movie. Then, therefore, how are we able to bring awareness and bring the light, right? Bring the gospel to these people. I've been in amusement parks. We've been in amusement parks and Harry Potter world, and we have spread the gospel. We've prayed for people. We've seen healings. We've seen we've seen crazy stuff happen. We were in a movie theater watching movies that people may say are demonic or have magic stuff in it or super power mm-hmm. stuff in it, right? And we've seen people get prayed for, get healed, mm-hmm. delivered in movie theaters. Very true. I mean, it's crazy. And so I think for for me to sit here and say, no, we absolutely can't partake in anything like that, it puts limitations on God. And who's to say that God can't use you to go in and do something? Who's to say that God doesn't want you to go watch that movie to get discernment on it? No, when you say watch movie, we're not talking about, I got to qualify. We're not talking about like immoral movies. We're not talking things that have like, like very bad stuff that Christians shouldn't even let. Into yeah. Yeah. I'm talking like, like a Marvel movie or, you know what I'm saying? Like, like one of those kind of movies where sure. the, where you watch and you're like dang like that's but here's going to be the kickback somebody will say well why would you even put yourself in that environment mm. do you see yeah but this is my thing though is that then we then we need to take that back to scripture and be mm-hmm. like well why why did Jesus put himself in some of those environments? Jesus mm. was in parties. Jesus was in, you know, he was he mm. was at the wedding, Very true. the wedding of Cana. He was he was in in the what was considered at the time the Red Quarter District. Mm-hmm. You know, he he was in those areas, and so it comes back to what I have to say is, then if you don't have the grace for it, then don't go. Yeah. If you don't have the grace, but don't but don't put condemnation on another Christian or on, you know, another person just because you don't have the grace for it. Yeah. Right. It's like some people don't have the grace to go to a bar to, to, to witness to people at the bars, maybe because they've struggled with, with self-control. They struggle with yeah. alcoholism in the past. Right. It's the same thing in, with, with, with like the movie stuff. Personally, me, I could totally go into a bar cause I am not an alcohol person. I yeah. cannot stand alcohol. I yeah. was, I was more of the, the ganja guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't an alcohol dude, and I think it's some that it's funny because my my grandfather was uh, pretty heavy into it, mm-hmm. but my dad was kinda, and then you know I tried, I just it didn't agree with me, and I think that's the Holy Spirit. So I could be a person that goes in those environments and survive without a problem, yeah. and not uh, partake of the sin that is taking place, but also be a light there. I could go sit down, get a glass of water, sit next to the drunk, and lead him to Christ. You know. Mm and prophesy and give words of knowledge or whatever. I could go into a psychic shop. Th- that's good, actually. Mm. There's magic, there's readings, there's all that stuff in there, mm-hmm. but you go in there and you're prophesying to the psychic. So, you know, the Pharisees are going to love this one because we're oh, going to... Yeah. They're going to clip it, they're going to expose it. Uh, all the way. Maybe not. I mean, not. We're not going to prophesy well, into existence. In Jesus' name, yeah. don't let it happen. But, <laughs> but you know, we, we go into places, like you said, and we'll be a light. But I'll let you continue. I don't want to interrupt anymore i just qualify no 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 that's good that's good stuff i really that was my biggest thing is people can be so religious and Mm. they can they can cause fear of this is my thing we need to have a healthy fear of the lord but don't have fear of man of oh i'm a christian i can't you know i don't want to be seen watching this or you know or oh people people instill fear Pharisees instill fear. That's what they want to happen. And it's controlling. And that's where, again, that's, that's my stand on the sense is I, again, I'm not going to put limitations on somebody Mm -hmm. and I'm not going to bring condemnation on somebody. Um, now if they're in full, full sin, if they're watching things that they should not be watching and they're, they are in sin, then obviously you call them out. But, um, again, I mean, I've seen some 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 movies that had some weird stuff in it. I was like, this is this is kind of witchcrafty here. This is this is some new agey stuff. Yeah. But the Lord was able to give me revelation on that. Sure. And then I've been able to use information that I've seen in movies to help while praying over people and doing deliverance. Yeah. It's, it's you know, some crazy let's stuff. Let's name some other uh, other movies other outside of even Harry Potter or something like that that has like magical things in it, but mm-hmm. has Christian. Uh, backing, so you know, you know the one who wrote the um, 
What's the, is it the screw tape letters? Yeah, C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis. Did you know he was friends with J.R. T- not J.R. T- no, Tolkien. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was friends with him who wrote Lord of the Rings. Yep. And Lord of the Rings has lots of magic. Yep. But at the same time, it's a Christian. The it's author's com- Christian. It's, he's Christian. Mm-hmm. He's friends with C.S. Lewis, and he has a whole backing in the movie about Christian. Yeah. Gandalf is supposed to be mm-hmm. a, not, is it Gandalf? Yeah. Gandalf is supposed to be like a, a, a Christ figure in a way. Mm-hmm. You know, and then if we talk about, oh, let's talk about the line, the witch and the wardrobe. Who wrote yep. that? Yep. C.S. Lewis. And and that's magical mm-hmm. in a sense. And also to but people love C.S. Lewis's mm-hmm. stuff. Now, this is where yeah. the Pharisees get put down mm-hmm. because they even love C.S. Lewis, mm-hmm. some of them. But they'll attack like some of this other stuff. But they're reading yeah. the line, the witch and the wardrobe and reading about Aslan and, and all this Which stuff. Which is a representation of Christ. Yeah. It's crazy. Isn't there a witch in there too? Yeah, mm-hmm. there's a witch in there yep. too. It was magic, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Ah, uh, and it's got little elves and stuff in there too, don't mm-hmm. it? Yeah. So see, I mean, this is where it like, and it also too, really quick. Yeah. That also has the um, uh, it's the the half human, half animals. Oh, centaur, which, minotaur, centaurs, yeah. yeah, all that stuff. Um, and it even has giants like what you would consider Nephilim. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then the also another person connected to C.S. Lewis was the person who wrote the Beast Chronicles as well. Mm-hmm. And it's this, it's like a off, it's like a off thing um, of uh, of Harry Potter too. Really, and that's about oh the Fantastic Beast. Yeah, 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 the Fantastic Beast. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. You see, this discussion can go many different ways. Mm-hmm. I'll use some Bible for you. All things are permissible. But all, not all things are good. If you do something with doubt and it's lacking faith, then it becomes sin. Anything not of faith is sin. I believe it's Romans 9. I, I don't know exactly where, but I think it's there. Um, so if you aren't going in faith, then you're automatically in sin. Here's another thing. You can fear going into places and getting something which is not healthy. And that can also cause you to become bound. Meaning you will be, if you really, at at the end of the day, if you really become so legalistic, you'll lock yourself in a room and you won't move. You won't go anywhere because you're scared. Everything you're doing, you're upsetting God and you're also partaking of demonic things. You know what I mean? And people get that way. There is extremists in the deliverance movement that like, I cannot hang around them. And I've been, I have been in such a place of like the condemnation movement of thinking that I'm doing stuff so much wrong that I end up in worse places or I've almost wanted to give up because like, I'm like, Jesus, it, you've made this so hard mm-hmm. that I can't even live. You know, if we listen, listen, here's the truth. And I know this is might offend some of you, but if I listen to all of your opinions, I would not do anything. I could not exist because everybody is differing on everything, man. Yep. But if we get down to the to the core of it, like one of the biggest things that we should should stay away from is actually being the ones producing magic, mm-hmm. or being the ones that are doing the immoral things, or being the ones that are you know d- doing the addiction stuff. And you know, if we are the ones that are creating that, meaning we are the ones who are, um, we're over here making a cauldron and putting stuff in it and stuff. Now yeah. that's a that's a conversation. You you can't do that. Now you participated in it. Mm-hmm. And and be, being a creator of that magic, now you're in a bad you're in a bad place. Yep. But being around it, being a light, is not going to cause you to be bound or cause you to fall into it. Yes. Like if I walk into a coven of witches, I'm preaching the gospel. Amen. I'm telling them the good news. And you know? you're not going to get a demon from there. It's just, no, no, it's just no. not going to transfer to you. People think that. No, no, no. They're People not gonna... think that you can get a demon no. just from being there. Yeah, it's the crazy. Lord. If the Lord sends me in there, I'm I'm equipped to go in there, Amen. and that means they're not going to be able to harm me. Mm-hmm. I've had friends. They go. They go up to um like Salem, and and they'll go. He, he, yeah. Art, Art, Art is his Art, name. Yeah, yeah, he goes. Art. Yeah, he ran, runs right in the middle of the witch thing. They're trying to curse him and everything. They don't do nothing to him. He's like an eighty something year old man. I think he's like eighty one, yep. and he's able to go do that, and they don't hurt him. You know. He's so it's witchcraft going on. They're doing spells, but he's a Christian with the light running in the midst of it. You know. You know yep. what I mean? That's so good. Yeah. So like. This is where, like, this is why people don't get to experience the fullness of what Christ has given them in this world because it's so limited. Yes. Um, 
so can you watch so Marvel? Um, what what else? DC, mm-hmm. just anything like guys. Ma- the magic stuff is all over the place. Mm-hmm. I know Christians that won't go to Disney World mm-hmm. because they don't want their kids exposed to Disney World. But I'm going to tell you something, parents. Like that's a big thing in the world. You're not going to be able to completely keep them from that. You can tell them to stay away. You can try to instill that on them, but maybe they'll get curious. My best advice to any parent is to tell them to preach the gospel in Disney World when they visit. Yes. That's going to make things a lot better. Yes. You know, I have I, I could go on a whole tangent about the youth because yeah. I even see see things on our youth calls about this. It's, it's crazy. What he's saying, guys, is if you are trying to say this is demonic, this is demonic to your child and you restrict them from things, obviously you protect them. But they do get curious and then they're like, "Hmm, Mm -hmm. like, what is this? And it can cause more harm than good. And what's happened, what I've seen in the deliverance movement specifically, because I deal with all the kids, you know, whose parents are in the deliverance movement. Mm -hmm. It's like everything like, Oh, that's demonic. That's demonic. That's demonic. Even tonight on my zoom call, kids are like, Oh, the peace signs demonic. This is demonic. (laughs) And I have to tell them, I'm like, guys, don't be fearful. Don't be, don't be fearful of all these things you have, you have, you know, not a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. You have authority. Follow the convictions of the Holy spirit in your life. I've learned this, like the Holy spirit has been very good that I'm about to go do something and pulling me back. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if I go somewhere, I'm about to jump into something, he'll pull me back. Like at the time of this video, we were about to record a video, right? We were about to react to something and the Holy Spirit was like, no, Daniel. And I was asked, asked Mark over here. And he was like, Daniel, I don't feel this is good either. So we listened to the Holy Spirit and we didn't do it. Yeah. Like there's some things I just don't do. And now look, looking hindsight 2020, it looks good because I'm coming against sin. I'm coming against things. Yeah. But it could trigger something to cause a bad result. So, mm-hmm. you know, this is why it's so important that we are led by the Holy Spirit. Mm. By, in all things, because yeah. God could get you going to a place that may get you persecuted from the religious authorities of the day, from the religious people today. But it's about what God is telling you to do. Mm. He may tell you to go to Universal and go into the Harry Potter ride. Like, I believe the Lord led me into Halloween Horror Nights every year. because And the fruit that we see. I remember when That's Isaiah crazy. was going with me the first time to Halloween Horror Nights. This guy, I felt like I was fighting up a tree, man. Him and a few others, man. It was like they were like still so religious. Yeah. And I was like, guys, what's wrong with you? You're not going to get a demon here. There's people in darkness. We need to shine yeah. a light in this place. I love going to Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah. I had so much that fun. That was fun, man. And we people saw are like, so many young people, yeah. so many teens experience the power of God mm-hmm. and truly, ex- hey, like this is what. This is what actual power looks mm-hmm. like, you know, not this fake stuff. It was, yeah. it was powerful. Yeah, we got to show them like what real power looks like. Kids got a kid got delivered. Yeah, He's right full, there. People were full on manifesting on the ground, getting deliverance, yeah, healings, yeah. crazy stuff. It was, it was awesome. It's true, and and and, and like, like <laughs> I've become this way after being in full time ministry since 2013. I'm like, what? What are we in 2024? I'm, mm-hmm. I'm like 11 years deep in this thing, full time. Like, I really have come to a place like, I don't care what people think when it mm-hmm. comes to me spreading the gospel. I get so many comments and stuff and they're like, don't you do this and that. I'm like, I don't want to hear that. Like, like, no, you are not yeah. my police person. You're not called to police me. I got other people that can police yeah. me. It's like this. I see other ministers, they even get persecuted for hanging with certain celebrities. And I'm like, what? They aren't becoming like the celebrity. Yeah. They're impacting the celebrity. Exactly. Like I talk to the person behind the scenes. I know what they're doing, but I watch the the Christians, like the religious Christians, mm-hmm. they they sit there and and they attack the person. I'm like, I know what's going on behind the scenes. What are you mm-hmm. doing? You know, but this is the ignorance of people. This is the this is mm-hmm. people don't don't take the time to watch the result of what's going. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Amen. A good tree bears good fruit. A bad tree bears bad fruit. What's the result? What is the fruit of what is taking place? What is manifesting? You know, what is the manifestation of what you have done? Is it bringing glory to Jesus Christ? Is people being, you know, turning from sin? Are they being healed? You know, 10 years from now, people might be like, yo, I was at Halloween Hard Nights one day, or as I was on that Harry Potter ride. Yeah. And somebody preached the gospel to me, and I'm saved because of that person. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm saved because they were willing to come out there and do that. Mm. You know, going in the middle of worldly festivals. The Bible says we're in the world, but we're not of the world. 
Yes. It says that because we have to be in the world and be around things that are going on, but we change the atmospheres. We change the dynamic of what is happening. You know, I know that um, I've been, you know, I used to watch the Marvel movies. Marvel movies are actually really good up to like 2018, mm. like uh, Endgame or what was it? Endgame, yeah. Infinity Wars, Endgame, whatever that was. Mm -hmm. The last one was they were really good with Thanos, yeah. his finger. Like that was when they stopped being really good and they got mm -hmm. all w-o-k-e and stuff yeah, you know that, la that last marvel movie we went to was something else yeah 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 <laughs> so like it, it's it's an agenda being pushed obviously mm -hmm. right so like we we see what we see what's going on today um but we go into those places and you know i've went in theaters yeah theaters and 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 talk to people and pray for people and, and stuff like that now i'm gonna ask you a question you gotta be honest with me now because mm -hmm. the devil's a liar let god be true every man a liar you got the Holy Ghost, right? Mm -hmm. Did you enjoy riding the Harry Potter ride? This last time? Yeah. If I'm being honest, no. And it was, I was sitting there and I remember being so excited and happy the first time I wrote it. I was like, it was yeah. like the best ride ever. And the last time we wrote it, I was like, this, this isn't it. Yeah. It was, it, I, don't, I don't know why. Like I, I was like a happy little fat kid in the candy store the first time the yeah. first time i wrote that and this last time i don't know if you saw but i was just like mm. yeah. i was just like it wasn't that good i don't get like excitement from it it's yeah kind of, it was kind of like cheesy you know i'll tell you guys mm -hmm. i don't know he hasn't rode this yet but there's hagrid's motorbike ride uh, i've wanted to ride that but it's so long listen we're gonna wait one day we'll go and wait that ride is intense mm. like just the ex the fun factor of it being a yeah. roller coaster yeah like it's so fun Oh, I get it. I love roller coasters. I get yeah. adrenaline. Like I love that adrenaline. But yeah, rush. I think I think the castle ride is kind of like played out. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's, not it's kind of played out right now. Um, I like now. I like Jurassic Park Velociraptor coaster. That thing. I haven't rode that one either. That thing is wild, man. Because the line was even the fast pass line was. Three yeah, hours I think we long. hit it at a bad crazy. time. We we, we gotta, gotta go. go back. Look, guys, we gotta go back to Universal on a good day, mm -hmm. and when when it's in high season, and just have a good time and ride all the rides. You know, but I think like, can Christians be, a, be around magic? Yes. Um, should they grab the wand and try to do magic? <laughs> Absolutely not. No, no, no. Should they be the ones doing the cauldron? Absolutely not. Mm -mm. Should they play with tarot cards? Absolutely not. You know, I've had things like it goes to even items in your house, right? If the Lord prompts you. And look, you got to you got to really dig through this because you we go through seasons of stuff. Sometimes the Lord will wants to see if you'll sacrifice something. Mm -hmm. And you'll feel it in your spirit. You'll just know, you'll be like, "Ah, this isn't supposed to be here," and you'll get rid of it, right? So, if you feel that in your house, if you look at something and you're like, "I shouldn't have this. This shouldn't shouldn't be around." Just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. That's the way I look. That keeps you from getting into idolatry. I think the biggest problem is is people start to idolize things, you know? Like you mm -hmm. used to idolize Harry Potter. Yeah, you know, and um, you were Hufflepuff, right? You, that's who you were. That was won't Hufflepuff the big old hippo or something like that? <laughs> no, no, the Hufflepuffs were they were like the super nice house. Like everybody there was super nice oh. and friendly. <laughs> Isaiah, they were you know. You haven't said much. <laughs> this is deep. He this is totally deep. being the Hufflepuff. This is deep. This is deep. Keep the, the Hufflepuff. He's a Huffle. He would be a Hufflepuffer. I'd say a Gryffindor, but you said I had a little Slytherin. Yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> it's okay. Why no, Slytherin? No, you're, no, but no. why if, Slytherin? But between both houses, though, you would be a Gryffindor over a Slytherin. I'm just saying you carry characteristics of a Slytherin. And what is the characteristics of a Slytherin since we're Harry Potter right now? Yeah, we're here right now. Let's talk uh, about we want to go. Let's talk go what's, this, what is, how, what's my characteristics? How, what's my... Slytherins, they have, they're very, very witty. They're very intelligent. They're very, um, I don't know how to describe like it. Organized, like very, like, like they're they're like like they know what's going on at all yeah. times, and like they're gonna figure out what they need to do to survive, sounds, how they get around. Sounds like, like one very, of them tests. Yeah, but like Slytherins are oh. also super super competitive, Wasn't like that one extremely competitive. Like like it's either yeah. it's Drake they're Malfoy. they're like move it or lose it. Like they if like you're getting yeah. left behind. <laughs> so I'm just saying you carry you carry. But Gryffindor is more your leaders. Your your Gryffindors are like your strong leaders. They're gonna they're gonna help you. You know they're gonna be wow, like you really know this Harry Potter stuff. You I, did get I, delivered from that, huh? You were. 
Wow, true just, humble. Just the Gryffindors were like the true, like honorable, you know, like the state. They were the sacrifice kind of people, right? You know. But yeah. yes, I could see that. You know, it reminds me of those tests where you'd be choleric, you would be uh, sanguine, you would be mm-hmm. what's the, choleric, sanguine, melancholy, phlegmatic. Mm-hmm. Those te- those things like that. I remember those? You know, another yeah. thing though. Is the Enneagram and test no, and no, no, we don't do Enneagram. Tests. I know, I know. I'm just no, saying, but that's do another do that. thing. Nah, 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 like nah. That. You know, that stuff can get into some like real demonic nature. Yeah, it's you bad. know, the people that were did that stuff, I think, really was in some demonic stuff. But like a lot of Christians do that though. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, just another like, example though. Don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, and that's don't. where you're saying idolatry though. Like that's don't, where people can um, don't do the Enneagram. Yeah, yeah it's new, but people take it on. People take that though as like their identity. So like for me, like I what like I took on like parts of Harry Potter like as as me, right? As an i as as an identity. You know, like people knew me for loving Harry Potter. Like people would buy me Harry Potter stuff all the time. For my birthday, they take me to Harry Potter World, right? Like that's where the idolatry comes in, is when you take it as a form of, you know, an identity. And so that's where you can get, you know, that's where you can cross can cross the line a hundred percent. Man of God, when we when we had first started this uh, podcast, the, the scripture came to my head that I always think about, and I've, I always like I, I'm like, where is the scripture at? And I've tried to Google it, I couldn't find it, and I finally find the scripture, but it's perfect for what we're talking about. So if we go to First Corinthians, chapter five, right? It's dealing about the case with the the son that that slept with his stepmom, right? Uh-huh. And if we keep reading, you know. Paul's addressing, you know, sexual morality in the church within amongst, like amongst believers. So he's addressing sexual morality amongst the believers. And we already know the case. He's like, hey, kick him out, give him to the devil. You already warned him. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He has, he's not repented, et cetera, et cetera, that he may come back repented, that the devil have him, right? Okay. If we go to verse, um, verse nine, right, that same chapter, he's like, I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with the sexual, sexually immoral people. Mm-hmm. And remember the context is he's speaking to a church, he's speaking to believers. Right. Verse 10 immediately, he's like, not at all, meaning the people of this world who are immoral. Ah. Or the greedy and swindlers or idolaters. In that case, if we if he was talking about them, in that case, you would have to leave this world. Ah. He said, But now I'm writing to you that you must not associate with anyone who claims to be another brother or sister. Yeah, but it's sexually immoral or greedy mm. or a daughter or a son or a drunkard or a swindler. Do not even eat with such person. And mm. he's like, what business is it of mine? Paul, I'm talking about Apostle Paul. He's like, what business is it of mine? This is verse 12. To judge those outside the church. He's like, that has nothing to do with me. He said, are you not to judge those inside? Mm. He said, God will judge those outside. He's Man. like, expel the wicked person among you. That just destroyed every Christian reaction channel. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Amen. Who judges the worldly folks? Ah, you know, it's deep. Yeah, it is, man. It is. But, you, know. I, you know, it's. I never. I can never find that verse. That's the crazy part. I, yeah. I'm trying to look for that verse. I can never find it. I read that thing like years ago. It's crazy. Yeah, we mm-hmm. we get we got to be around them, man. We got to we got to be around the stuff that's going on. You know, there's like strip clubs. Like we're not going in there. I mean, I I wouldn't want to even go into the male strip clubs. <laughs> hey, man. I wouldn't want to even be like, in there. Kiki, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Kiki, I don't have that call. Me neither, I don't, man. Have, I don't that have that call. grace, man. I don't have to go. Would I preach to one? Sure, but I don't have that call, man. I, I'm not into the magic mic stuff. So I uh no, it's true, man. And and <laughs> but some people can go in there. Like some people have grace to go in there and win those people over. I remember one time I was doing Uber Eats back in the day. I used to do Uber Eats. Mm-hmm. And I had to deliver this place. You did that one time too, right? I did do that. I and I had to deliver to this place. That. And I walk and I'm That's like, crazy. I'm like, hold on, nobody's coming out the door. And they like, mm-hmm. they were like, I can't come door right here. You need to step in the front, right? Man, I stepped in the front. That place stunk, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, sweat, alcohol. The smell was horrible. Yep. And like the ladies come up and grab the food. And it and I was a I'm a, I'm a Christian at the time. I'm like, I know why I'm not into this stuff. And then I can't think to myself, I said, I can't believe back in the day I even came into these places. Like, wow. like I was there like, this is not entertaining at all. Yeah. You know? That's crazy. So I, del- I, deliver, I deliver the stuff. I put the food down and I'm like, nah, I'm not called this. But yeah. there is actually women groups that go in 
and mm-hmm. minister to the women yeah. because you know cocaine is very prevalent in that, in mm-hmm. that. and they got a strong addiction to it because they you know want to stay awake and all this stuff yeah. they want to stay high yeah. numb. Yeah, they want to stay numb huh mm-hmm. numb yeah they got to be yeah. numb to I do had their friends job that did that. friends that had a group and that's what they did they go to the strip clubs yeah. minister to the women yeah it's crazy so i mean some people do have special calls for special certain things you know mm-hmm. i remember um i went to the rainbow people a lot of people don't know who they are. No, it isn't what you think, man. It's the old hippie. So it's the hippie movement that's continued on through the children of the hippies. It's just become very demonic, man. Yeah. And they go into the woods in different areas. Like here in Florida, they go to Ocala Forest. Mm. And I... Oh, that's uh, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, they go to the middle of nowhere. And I remember I went deep into the forest where they were. And I would I, I would uh, go meet some Christians out there that would meet with these people. Man, I saw the craziest stuff, man. There was a girl sitting around the campfire that came to the Christian area. And I pray for this woman. This girl like went crazy with a demon on the inside of her and got set free. And to this day, I'm like, Lord, you set that woman free. I wonder where she's at today. This is back in like 2014. Wow. And she was like crawling. It was a fire there. We had to keep her from doing all, going in the fire and all that stuff. It was, it was mm. pretty crazy. And uh, I might have that video still somewhere. I have to bring that one out of the archives. Um, but, but I was in with the rainbow people, man. And like, not everybody can even go into that because look, there's some intense folks, man. Like they, they are like, there's some really demonized folks in those forests, yeah. man. You think you're, you think you're going to, to, to a horror movie in some ways, you know, and you mm-hmm. might not come back out. Was it nighttime? Uh, day, night. They go all day and night. Those how, how, they I'm do, like, they I'm do like, like a lot of little seances mm-hmm. around I'm, fires and, and mm-hmm. it's pretty crazy. How man. deep in the forest? Like how far do you get to walk? Uh, you got to trek a little bit. Wow. Dirt That's roads, crazy. trek down, and then yeah. you go into force. You know what? Honestly, um, I wouldn't mind taking us into something like I that. I was just saying, day. I wanted like, to we go. Gotta, guys, I know y'all listen to podcasts. We got to get adventurous, man. I need to, yeah. I need a little advan- adventure. I've always wanted to go to the electric forest. Electric the electric forest. forest. Have you ever heard of that? What is it's that? In, no, it's, <laughs> why are you uh, laughing like that, bro? Well, why, <laughs> no, it's a real thing. The electric forest. What is that? So my friend who I actually witnessed to, she got saved in college. She would go to these crazy, crazy festivals, and it's like uh-huh. EDM, like oh, it's electric, like the crazy, ah, crazy, like. But like they're there, but and do, like they take know? out tents, uh-huh. and they just tent there, and they are on drugs twenty four seven, and yeah. they're doing. They do all the this Isaiah's stuff. drugs, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. no, but the music <laughs> and everything there is so demonic, and they do all they're all doing witchcraft and stuff there. Twenty four seven, yeah. And, so um, so they yeah. have an they have an EDM concert that happens in Orlando every year. It's like the Electric oh, Daisy. Gosh. Um, you know what I'm talking about? I, if I better God, we go better God. I'm gonna see everybody and their mama. Literally yeah, everybody yeah. and oh their mama. But it's so perverse. Going, it's horrible. Yeah. So I don't. Yeah. You know I don't put even put myself in. See, there's some things about him. That, like I gotta really be led into it. Man. Yeah. If I'm gonna do it, like Halloween Horror Nights, okay. But like we're gonna go to some going shops. going to some place. Yeah, we can do that too. But going to like some places where. You know, people are almost naked and stuff. Like, yeah, it's like eighty percent of them are. Like, yeah, it's kind of like oh, it, the temptations and stuff. Not that I would. I'm not saying that I would fall by the grace of God. I wouldn't. But like, uh, gotta have. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah, I mean, I'd Holy probably Spirit. take wifey in with me. You know. Um, but man, that would have to be t- that would that would have to be some because there's some like there's some like no holds barred type people like yeah them spirits them seducing spirits when you walk into their areas they'll touch feel grab they don't yep. care no limitations especially now in because we're near Orlando there's a whole nother parade people that come in oh. and and they're very aggressive. Yeah, like they. Had, I remember I drive Uber, Mark, and I would I would go pick up some folks from that side of the world, you know, and I'd be in the car and they'd be soliciting me and some crazy stuff. I put the Holy Ghost on them, man. Uh, they would try to say some crazy stuff. I'm like, you ain't touching me, bro. Yeah, I said I'll fight. Yeah, and then I'll have to give you the Holy Ghost because you know, we don't roll that way. Yeah, I don't I don't do that. <laughs> There's but. To get back to one thing I want to say with like the magic and like the witchcraft and stuff, there's so much perversion in that, that a lot of people who are in yeah, yeah. that crowd who roll that way are heavy, heavy into that stuff. You're absolutely right. Like yeah. all the shops, like all, all those shops, at least I'm from Indiana. And so like I would, I noticed one time all the shops that were like that and that had all that stuff and the people who were into that stuff, it, they, they were, they were part of that crowd. Yeah. And it's because there's such heavy perversion there with it. Yeah. And the Lord gave me that 
gave me that revelation on that. Yeah. It's crazy. Perversion breeds perversion. Mm -hmm. It don't matter what it is. If you're in something perverse, you're going to fall into something perverse. Yeah. So it's, you're going to get, whatever you do is going to be perverted. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be, if you're in the counterfeit, everything else is going to be counterfeit. Yeah. So, you know, um, we, we got to be a light to the world. It, you know, the, the world is dark, but we're called to be a light and we need to shine the light really bright. So remember, you can be in something, but you don't have to be influenced by it and you don't, you don't have to be participating in it. You know, so can Christians go watch, can they watch movies with magic in it? I'd say yes for, for, for certain reasons. Um, to completely avoid it in this world, this day is going to be super hard, man. Yeah. Like you'd almost have to isolate yourself. It's going to be super hard to like you completely you, throw it out the window. You won't be able to leave your now, house. Now, here's the thing. I heard a good apologist say this. Sometimes you have to look deeper into something. So like look at the, the story. Look at what it's portraying. Look past all these little nitpicking things sometimes and say, what is the overall arching theme of what you're watching? Like when you watch Lord of the Rings, some people say Christians can't watch that. But what is the overall arching theme of the movie? Is it wholesome? Meaning, is it is it is it nothing but like really demonic stuff? I'll give you a key to find out if you're watching something that the Lord don't want you to watch. You feel an icky feeling. There's an ickiness uh, that comes over you, and if you feel that icky feeling, what you need to get out. You need to get up and go. Like horror movies where people are gruesomely getting messed up and stuff. You you cannot watch that stuff and not feel the conviction to some extent because like. God is a God of brings life. I mean, Jesus brought life and life more abundantly and he saves us from death. So like, why would you go entertain that stuff? I've seen people delivered from that. I've seen kids get delivered from entertaining certain things, mm. you know, and idolizing it. That's another thing is sometimes this is why we got to teach people about Christ. So if they are watching certain movies, they're not going to idolize the movie. That's where the demons come in as they, 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 familiarize herself with these characters in the movies and they make the characters their savior and heroes and they live by these characters. Mm. You know, I saw people make even Sonic the Hedgehog like an idol to them because Sonic the Hedgehog. Now here's the thing. This person's a Christian now, but God actually had to, now this is crazy. Mm. God actually used Sonic the Hedgehog in this person's life to keep them from, from taking themselves out. Wow. But later on, this person found out that, it was God behind using that later on, it, you know, she, her eyes were awakened, found out that, oh, it wasn't like Sonic, but God was using Sonic to get her attention and to bring her comfort and support in a horrible, traumatic part of her life. Wow. So, so to nullify everything, to say people, it, it's, it, you got, this is where you have to be open-minded on this stuff because yeah. God will use all things mm -hmm. for his glory to get people to where, where they need to be. Yeah. So God can even use Super Mario. He can use Sonic the Hedgehog. He can use mm -hmm. Captain America. He can use Dragon Ball Z. You know, I even Dragon Ball Z to an extent helped me even to kind of get into the Christian, Christian thing because Goku is such a savior figure with supernatural power that was always winning, but he was also humble and he wasn't like, you know what I'm saying, Isaiah? Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. was never like trying to be the guy, mm -hmm. but in a sense, he knew he was the guy, but he would mm -hmm. always be like, wow, your power. He would talk to the other people and be like, wow, Vegeta, your power is so strong. You will probably even be greater than me one day. Or you'll say something like that. That was just his character, which really sounds like a humble character who carries yeah. a very strong spirit, you know? Yeah. So I would look at that and then I'm, I'm, I'm reading about Jesus and I, I'm kind of like correlating aspects. Now I'm not saying Goku is exactly like that. No, not at all, but I'm correlating things. And yeah. God used those things to kind of give me an imagination and give me an idea of like yeah. aspects of Christ, you know? Yeah. So you can't completely throw the, the whole thing out. Yeah. You, God is using stuff. Yeah. Even, even, oh, go ahead. No, I just wanted to say really quick, like, even like if you, I don't, I don't know if, if you saw our bracelets, but for the conference for Super CSNI Mario, Youth, works, it was Super yeah. Mario. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah. it was, it, it, it was Super Mario themed. And the Lord gave me that for level up was mm. our series and acts one eight. And he was mm. like, the youth will understand how they can level up and how they can, you know, operate in the power of the Holy spirit through this analogy. Right. And so now I have 
I have uh, kids and there's there's people in TSN who are like, hey, hey, Evangelist Keegan, every single time I play Super Mario Bros., I think about the Holy Spirit and I think about the baptism of the Holy Come Spirit. On. And, you know, it's like so cool how like Super Mario Brothers, you could say that that's demonic or witchcraft or whatever. I don't care what people and do you, think. But, you know, but yeah. now kids are playing it and they're they're relating it back to Jesus and the Holy yeah. Spirit. It's so cool. Yeah. And eventually, you know, they uh, maybe not grow out. Who knows? You know, as long as they ain't taking magic mushrooms, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, don't do that. we don't do the magic mushrooms. No. We, we were out no. there in Daytona, man, of God, when that yeah. big group of guys uh, walked by, mm. and there was a carton of cigarettes oh. that the Lord used mm. for us to minister to them. So they had a, they had, a, crazy. They had a carton of cigarettes in their hand, and they offered Mark the cigarettes. <laughs> They're like, hey, you want one? They, like, they found it on the ground. They found the <laughs> carton of cigarettes Mark. on the ground ra randomly. Like, wow. Wasn't even theirs. And then they offered to Mark. And then Mark starts ministering to them. And then you start ministering to yeah. them. And it's a whole thing. And then we're like, and I'm, then I'm holding this carton of cigarettes in my hand. And I'm like, God just used these cartons of like, these yeah, cigarettes yeah. Yeah. to bring them to the Lord. It was oh, just it was crazy. crazy. Amazing. Yeah. It's, it's crazy you were saying that because the moment you were saying that, I thought about Ephesians 5, verse 11. And it talks about. Take no part in the unfaithful works of darkness, but instead expose them. And a lot of the times, you know, people look at that term exposed in a negative word, but it's simply to reveal the truth. Mm. And a lot of the times that God, he will strategically use uh, things that are evil, you know, things that are worldly to expose the truth within that evil mm. to bring that person to conviction, which is crazy. You know, so I, I was just thinking of that. So. Mm. And it boils down to spiritual maturity too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To be able to discern what is good and evil. And wow. um, yeah, it's good. That was really good. Wow. Well, guys, I guess we answered a whole lot of your questions on this one. Can Christians watch movies with magic in it? Well, they shouldn't entertain magic. But... But for the sake of Christ, we do what we have to. Look, be led by faith. All right? Be led by faith, not be sight. Be led by your convictions. If you listen to mankind's mouth on certain things, they'll try to stop you from walking into areas that you could be bringing the gospel to see people saved. So ultimately, what are we saying? Walk in righteousness. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Um, allow Him to lead and guide your feet because He is a lamp unto your feet. He ordains the footsteps of the righteous. That means walk in faith. That's what I'm saying. Walk in faith and listen to the convictions of the Holy Spirit, and you will not go astray. You will not walk into places that you're not supposed to be. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed episode 13 of That Supernatural Talk podcast. I love you guys tremendously. I thank you for all of your support. Seriously, I really do. And um, I can't wait till the next episode because I know we're going to talk about something Amazing. Go to www.thesupernaturallife.org to get all the information that you need. And before we end it all, you guys know who I have to pass it on to. Hey, I'll see you guys soon. Take it, Keegs Ice. Amen. Thank you, That Supernatural Talk family, for watching episode 13. I can't believe we're on episode 13 of our podcast. And hey, I want to give you guys some quick instruction if maybe this is your first time watching on how you can support that Supernatural Talk podcast. In the description below, there will be links on how you can support. You can go to our website, which is th hosted through Buzzsprout, and become a monthly supporter on there. Or you can become a member of the channel. Guys, trust me, you want to be a member of this channel because you're going to get exclusive behind the scenes content that nobody else sees where we go even deeper and Guys, we talk about some crazy fun stuff behind the scenes. So you want to make sure that you guys become a member. That's how you can support uh, for everything you see in our studio down to our microphones to cables to even the plant behind me. So make sure that you guys support that supernatural talk and all that God is doing. And another way you can support, even if it's not financially, is by liking, sharing, and subscribing and letting the world know about that supernatural talk podcasts and everything that God is doing through Apostle Daniel and the global online movement he has uh, done with That Supernatural Life. God bless you. We love you all, and we'll see you on episode 14 of That Supernatural Talk. Mm -hmm.